Hello everyone. Today is Sunday, so I had a chance to talk to my parents. They are alive. They're okay. Um, and presently they are more worried about our friends and family members in Israel. As uh, one of the commenters uh, pointed out at one of the blogs I follow, this situation is horrible for both sides. This is extremely bad for Palestinians. This is extremely bad for Israelis. So whoever orchestrated that particular attack is basically a ruthless bastard or bastards. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, um, the country continues to fight, uh, even as it is reeling from the tragedy in the village of Raza. As I mentioned before, the pressure is on because Putin is doing his best to throw everything he has at Ukraine, hoping that the war weariness will set in um, in the U.S. because of the chaos in the government and in the EU because they are taking on the bulk of Ukrainian refugees and because um, in a lot of ways, they are affected economically because they're right there. You know, they have the front row seats uh, to the war. Uh, they have to worry about their borders and uh, whatever economic ties they've had with Ukraine and Russia have now been disrupted and who knows for how long. That is a very dangerous situation indeed because, yes, the war weariness is a thing. To top it off, there is this prediction um, expecting a record number of drone strikes this winter. And that is based on the information we have from last winter. Because we know that Russia is absolutely ruthless when it comes to civilians, when it comes to civilian infrastructure, it is very likely that they will once again target electricity and heat and water. So... Russian pundits made absolutely no pretense about Russia's intentions about this because they basically said, if we can't bomb them out, we're going to freeze them out. That is their attitude toward Ukrainian people. This is what it's been through the course of this entire war, and this is where it remains. So it's now a race not only against the war weariness, but also a race against weather. Because despite the fact that Ukraine is sort of in the south and uh, bordering the Black Sea, which is like a very popular resort area and associated with the subtropical area, the winter in Ukraine can be extremely windy and extremely cold. I've been through quite a few of those and I can definitely tell you that. Going back to what has happened at the village of Raza, so as I told you yesterday, what was so horrific about it, first there was that insane strike against the grocery store that killed dozens of people, and then there was a targeted strike, a missile strike against the funeral for the dead that killed more people. And based on the conversation with my dad, basically between those two strikes, uh, half of the population of that village has been wiped out. And then in addition, they struck the center city, Kharkiv, destroying 88 buildings, um, killing people, including a child. And uh, I think there were several dozen wounded there. So that is what is happening. And um, again, Ukraine cannot be expected to do all of this alone, to be dealing with all of this death, all of this grief. The psychological effects of war are unimaginable unless you're in the middle of it. So this is a time for some seriously heavy thinking for the U.S., for you, for Africa, for the Middle East, for everyone involved, because everyone is involved. And um, to those who support Donald Trump's idea that Ukraine should just sacrifice its areas to preserve the rest of the country. If it does, there will be no Ukraine left. Besides, does anyone really think that if Ukraine sacrifices one-fifth of its territory, that Russia is going to stop? What? 
Like it stopped when it was left unpunished after annexing Crimea? That is nonsense. The world has to step up and fight.